Stuart Schlesner just dropped this morning materials, metal, and ice from Steinberg. And if you don't have Halion, you can get the free Halion Sonic SE player and then use this virtual instrument in any program. And it's a really unique virtual instrument. I'm gonna show you a few of the sounds in it. We're gonna build something and give you another perspective on the software so that if you're thinking of buying it, you can decide if it's the right thing for you. Steinberg sent me a copy of the software, but they're not paying me to make the video and they don't have a say in what I say in this video. This one is definitely geared towards the sound designer. I am really impressed with the sound designing capabilities of the software and I think that's kind of something you would need to know going in. It comes with about 150 patches and I'd love to see more patches on a piece of software like this, but it comes with so many different materials to work with that you really should dig into it and start crafting your own sounds with it. I think a great thing to do when you get an instrument like this is to open it up and just plan to sit there and make some patches for yourself. And there's so much interesting sound design capabilities from wavetable synthesis and granular synthesis in the software, as well as the really unique sound sources that they've recorded. The two guys that made the software have a pretty impressive list of things that they've worked on in the past. So you know that the sounds that have been recorded are top quality and that the software itself is designed to do something unique and really creative. And I think they've done that here. So I have to say this one is hard on my CPU. I've got a 2013 Mac Pro. So this thing is eight years old, the, the trash can. So just so you're aware. So here's the first patch, pumping air. Did you guys know this? If I press shift star, look what just happens. In Cubase, I just called up the notes I played, even though I wasn't even playing to a click track, the song wasn't even playing. It recorded the notes I played in a little buffer. And here they are. And you can see that they're, they're played freely. But because I was playing pretty close to the tempo of my project, I can probably make this work. This is just a little aside because dang, this is one of my favorite features of Cubase. So I'm gonna set this to, uh, eighth notes, I'm going to quantize everything and you can see that everything's a little bit off but I can very quickly move things over um, probably right there and then this, all of this stuff probably just needs to shift over a little bit one more over and then this one over here and then this one right here let's see if that worked And then let's talk about the interface here of materials, metal, and ice. You can see that the layout is very minimalist and I really like that. You can tell that we have a bunch of layers in here. So if I click these little buttons here, we can see the different layers. I can get to the different layers by clicking on those tabs right there to get to the details. I do wish the text was a little bit bigger. I mean, I can I could see it just fine on my display, but I'm, I'm wondering how this would translate on a laptop, especially because the software isn't scalable yet, so we can't make it bigger. And, and again, just we need that we need that feature, Steinberg. So bring it in. We've got some obvious things right off right off the front here: volume, pan, etc. And then we can see our three different layers and just a few more details about the software. This one is is kind of an interesting combination. We've got brass sounds, synthesizer sounds. And then we've got all sorts of metal and ice recorded sound sources. And you can click the sound source right here. If you click this little magnifying glass, you can get to the different sound sources. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's go back to our main page for a sec. We're gonna turn off the other layers and just listen to Frozen Rocket. And pan it to a certain side. Play with the envelope, there's send effects right here. We've got reverb, delay, and transform. And transform is an interesting one. It, it puts your sound through an impulse response. So it's sort of like a, a delay, but it could, could be a lot more than that. It could be how sound would bounce around in a very strange, 
unearthly environment. So reverb, delay, or transform, you click on the little master button up top, and that's where you can go and choose different sounds. And then we've got the, the, the usual stuff we can do th with these sounds, like play with the envelope. This is some kind of sound. If it's a synthesizer, we can go in and edit the, the synthesizer. So you'll see a wavetable. You can play around with the position of the wave right here. So it's cycling through this wavetable. We can choose how fast you're going through the wavetable. That's interesting here, the different oscillations. There it's going really slow, really quickly. And the position, and then we can choose the number of voices here as well and get some sort of unison type stuff. That would be a fun one to automate, that's for sure. Maybe hook that up to the, the modulation wheel. So then we've got filter, FX, and we can add from this drop down, we can add all sorts of uh, crazy effects in here as well. Ring modulation. Choose an LFO right there. We've got frequency shifter. And then we've got the usual stuff like distortion, saturation, phaser, etc. So we'll really go in and start crafting each different layer. And then we can click on motion over here and we can do things like turn on an LFO. We have a, a little step sequencer that we can do for changes. And then we have an arpeggiator as well that can arpeggiate through notes. I can go to my other layers and I can adjust things with those as well. So if I go to early deep, it's probably some kind of sound. And so we don't have things like synthesizer controls on this one. Let's turn it on. There, and then we'll go to this one right here, this brass loud. And then the other thing that I find interesting is that you actually have different layers on a single layer. So some of them here have multiple layers. So this brass loud, there's one layer, and here's the other layer. Here we kind of pan left and right a little bit. So not a tremendous difference between those two, but other ones will have more dramatic changes. Okay, let's have a look at another patch and just play something in with that one. This one is called Space Piano. Really nice patch. And we can listen to the different layers and see if we even need to have some of them on. Here's our electric piano. It's like a grand resonance, so maybe a grand piano, the resonance of a grand piano. And then these ones, this one seems to be adding just a little bit of, uh, of sound in the background. There's our space piano. Let's try another patch. We'll go to this one right here. Paranormality. Oh, I love that. Okay, so over on the left hand side, we can see that the modulation wheel is assigned to certain things already. But we can also see that it's on this automatic thing. So it's moving up and down on its own. I'm going to turn that off so that now I'm using the mod wheel. Okay, let's try playing that in.
for this one, we'll go to the browser. I'm going to go to load, and we can see the metal and ice category right here. Let's go try some of the brass sounds out. It's an interesting addition to this library. And I can just click down and press enter and go to the next patch. Flutter, that sounds interesting. Now let's look at some of the sound design capabilities when you're starting from scratch. And if you click this little button right here, we can get to initialized metal and ice. So now we can see a bare patch with nothing in it. And if I click on the first group here, we can see the different options. So we can see all these different sound sources up top. We've got instrument synths and sound effects. So here, these are all of the different sound effects. So there's, so there's so many different sound sources here. That's why I kind of feel like it really is up to you to go in and start messing around with these. I'm really liking the direction these Hallian instruments are going. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun playing with these kinds of sounds as a sound designer. So I click on instruments and then now we can see things like the, the brass and stuff like that. So let's try Dom showed off this tack piano on his video. Oh man. So if you need that Sherlock Holmes kind of piano sound, I think this one's got you covered there. Brass staccato, let's try that one. Um, bowed bucket. I used to be a bowed bucket player myself. You probably didn't know that. Not true. Okay, so now we've got some synthesizer sounds. Tons in here. So if I load that one up, it looks like that one is, that one is wavetable. So if you see these, so if you see this look, I'm pretty sure that's a wavetable. Let's try wave shaped fear. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is granular. So I think that's what they're doing here to distinguish. These ones are granular and these ones are wavetable. And then we've got some of these other ones here. And this is probably just a, a sample synthesizer of some sort with different layers. Very cool. These sound sources are so unique and interesting. Don't forget about them when you're looking for sounds, when you're looking for patches. We'll try this uh, Telespiel. Telespiel. I love these kind of vocal sounding ones. That's awesome. Okay, so I mean, I could probably go through this all day, but there are some really incredible sounds in here. Bowl and lid. Let's try some of the sound effects. So to me, these kinds of sound effects, like the typewriter, I saw them a typewriter on one of the patches. You load the typewriter on one layer and then you have a synthesizer sound on another layer. And the typewriter becomes kind of like the transient control for a synthesizer sound, giving it some kind of attack or some kind of a release. So that's a really powerful feature of all of these different layers, which you're seeing a lot in a lot of synthesizer design these days is multiple layers so that you can do things like have a synth sound and go, okay, I need some kind of crispy attack at the beginning of it. So you go and you add something like that little typewriter in there. I've got two loops in here from the Blockbuster loops and samples that comes with Cubase. Let's find a cool synthesizer lead sound and try playing along with it here. And turn off that layer. And then let's put this one 
Let's do some reverb, some delay. Oh, cool. Nice. Okay, let's play along with the song. Very cool instrument. I hope that was enough to give you a taste of what's in there so that you can decide in the future or now if this is something that you want to have in your arsenal of virtual instruments. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and the bell if you're new here and we'll see you in the next video.